What's up, y'all? My name is Greg. This is Big Play MTG. In this video, I want to break down the cases. Okay, this is a new card type that we have here, the Murderers of Karlov Manor. And I want to take a look at each one of them. There are 12. And I want to say, all right, for each one of these, how good are they? Then how easy is it to solve? And then are they worth solving? You really get like a nice bonus out of this. So stay tuned. My goal here at Big Play MTG is to make sure that you improve your win rate in limited and just have fun playing limited magic. Okay, so our first case is the case of the Shattered Pact. And for each one of these cases, there's going to be something that it does immediately once this enchantment enters the battlefield. Then there's going to be a condition to solve it. And once it's solved, it says if unsolved, solve at the beginning of your end step. So you don't get it immediately. You have to wait till the beginning of your end step to solve it. Okay. Then once it's solved, you get some kind of condition. All right. So let's take a look at the case of the Shattered Pact. It says when this case enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. And this also is colorless, right? So you can use two men of any colors to go, you know, to cast a spell. Then you can go find a land that you need, put it into your hand. Okay, then it says there to solve, there are five colors among permanents you control. So how easy is this going to be to solve? I think that in the right deck, in the five color deck, this is going to be relatively easy to solve. Um, there are cards like niv Mizzet and the Ley Line of the Guild Pack, that, and granted those are rares, but I think that in the right deck, you should be able to solve this most of the time. Then once it's solved, at the beginning of your combat on your turn, target creature you control gains flying, double strike, and vigilance. That's really big game. So I think you get a really big payoff for the, getting this to um, to become solved. I also think that the five color decks are going to be base green. So if you start down the road of, you know, maybe you have a green couple green cards and you see this coming around relatively early, this might be a really good one to pick up and see if you can, you know, build around this. So Looking forward to playing the five color deck and excited to see how many times we can get the case of the Shattered Pack to solve. All right, so our next case is the case of the Getaway Express. And, and right away, my mind jumps to Agatha Christie, Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, really nice flavor here. So when it comes into play, this is one in a white and it says, when this case enters the battlefield, choose target creature you don't control. Each creature you control deals one damage to that creature. Then to solve, three or more creatures attack this turn. And then creatures you control get plus one, plus up. So first, I want to just note that as I'm looking at all the white cards, it looks like white is just like the go wide color. I feel like in most white decks, you're going to be able to have a decent amount of creatures. So for two mana, this can be a pretty nice removal spell, and it can be pretty efficient. So I imagine on a lot of white board states, you're going to be able to, to kill something worth value. Red-white, looking at the Boros, is, is just Battalion. That's just attacking with three or more creatures. So, especially in the red-white deck, but I, I still, still think in white-black and white-blue, white-green, I think in most white decks, you're just going to be able to have three creatures and attack, um, and then you can be able to flip this. So, uh, then on your next turn, then your creatures get plus one, plus oh. So, not the biggest impact there. I mean, that's, that's nice, especially if you have a lot of tokens. But I think that you really are are gaining value on this in the very first in the very first one. So um, it's really nice if you can pick off a creature, then attack and, and then kind of buff your own guys. But I think most of the time you're going to play the case of the Getaway Express just for the first chapter of this, um, and then you know if, if you can get the other bonus, then that's fine. But I think relatively easy to solve. Um, but look to pick this one up early. This one looks nice. All right, so our next case is the case of the Pilfered Proof. So we have one in a white again. Uh, whenever a detective enters the battlefield under your control, and whenever a detective you control is turned face up, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Then to solve, you have three or more detectives, okay? Then once it's solved, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus a clue token are created instead. So... Again, I think all of these are going to be kind of nice, just kind of giving you value. So it says when a detective enters the battlefield under your control or when it's turned face up, white has a lot of detectives. White blue is the detective archetype. So you're going to have detectives flying around. Then controlling three or more detectives, I don't think is going to be that hard, especially if you're trying to build around this. So this is kind of a blue, white, gold card, in my opinion. Then if you would create a token, then you make that token plus a clue. So this is going to give you some value. Um, I like all parts of this. I just think this is going to play really nicely, especially in blue-white detectives. 
Uh, look to pick this up. I think this is just going to do a lot of stuff that you're interested in. I don't think it's going to be backbreaking, but it's just going to be one of those cards that just gives you more and more value all the time. And I'm into those. So I think this looks really nice and I think it's relatively easy to solve. All right. So our next case is the case of the uneaten feast. This is one white for a rare. And it says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. And so we've seen these kind of effects before. They tend to be pretty powerful. To solve, you've gained five or more life this turn. This one seems like a, a little bit of an ask. Now, when creatures come on the battlefield, they, they do trigger this. And so, you know, there are lots of token makers. There are ways to, to get, you know, two tokens or something like that. Then I think you're going to need like a lifelink creature or something else to, to trigger this. This one looks a little bit more difficult to solve. Then let's see what happens when it's solved. It says, sacrifice this case. Creature cards in your graveyard gain. You may cast this card from your graveyard until end of turn. So that's super powerful. Um, so while I think you have to work a little bit to get this one to, to be solved, once you get it solved, very powerful. And I think this is going to be a, just a, generally a good card. Um, you know, There's going to be a lot of incidental life gain flying around in the set. And so the case of the Uneaten Feast, if you can trigger it and, you know, let's say that you have a lot of little little cards that are there, um, there, there are different ways to, to gain life between lifelink creatures, tokens entering the battlefield, there's some food type stuff running around. So uh, I'm really interested to try to play this one and, and solve this case. And I think one of the things I like about the cases is that they're these kind of little side quests, right? You kind of want to see in a limited format, how many of these can you solve? And uh, this one looks like it'll be really explosive once it is solved. All right, moving on to blue, we are at the case of the Filched Falcon. All right, so this is blue for when this case enters the battlefield, investigate. All right, so that seems pretty reasonable. Um, then to solve, you control three or more artifacts. I don't think that's going to be very hard in blue decks, um, especially in blue-white uh, with blue, white, blue, black with a lot of clues running around. I think there's going to be a lot of thopters and other artifact stuff in blue, red. So I, I imagine that this will be pretty easy. Then it says, when solved, two in a blue, sacrifice this case, put four plus one plus one counters on target non-creature artifacts, so probably a clue. It becomes a zero, zero bird creature with flying in addition to its other types. So is this worth it to solve it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be relatively easy to do that. You're going to get a lot of clues. Um, sure, just kind of turn this in. It's, it's kind of like an installment plan, like play this for one, you get a clue. Maybe you need to draw cards off of it. And then once those clues are just kind of laying around, you can sack this and turn it into a 4-4 four, four flying bird. Seems pretty good. So I'm not overwhelmed by this, but I think you're going to be happy with the case of the Filch Falcon. I think it's just a good, solid, playable card and, and should be good. All right, so our second one in blue is the case of the Ransacked Lab. This is two in a blue for a rare enchantment. And this says instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. All right, so it does the Goblin Electromancer thing. Then it says to solve, you cast four or more instants and sorcery spells this turn. I don't know how often you're going to trigger this in limited. I mean, it sounds like maybe a cool build around and you know, some kind of constructed thing. But uh, I just don't know how often you're going to get this. So... Uh, then if you do solve it, it says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. Super powerful. Uh, I just don't think you're going to get much out of this other than instant sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. It just sounds like like putting too many instant sorcery spells in your deck. I, I just don't think that you're going to get this thing to go off. But if you do, you get a big bonus out of it. So we'll see. Um, you know, I might be wrong, but I, I think the you're just going to play this for the, the first part of it. And then I'm not even sure if that's really where you want to be with two and a blue. Uh, where This is all you get. It doesn't affect the board. It just makes things cheaper. You know, with a Goblin Electromancer, you would get a 2-2 two -two body. This doesn't even give you that. So I'm not super interested in case of the Ransack Lab, but, you know, we'll see. I'm kind of interested to play with it, and, and maybe maybe I'll be wrong. All right, let's move on to black. We're at Case of the Gorgon's Kiss. For black, you get a, an enchantment at Uncommon. It says when this case enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target creature that was dealt damage this turn. Then to solve it, three or more creature cards were put in a graveyard from anywhere this turn. So I think you're going to be able to do that quite a bit, right? And I think that oftentimes this is going to be played and then solved the same turn. But I also think there are a good bit of ways to mill yourself. Um, you're just going to be able to get 
three or more creature cards from graveyards. I think that's just going to happen. Um, I think that, you know, the, the quickest way to do that is just through combat. Um, so I imagine that, you know, if you're in the white black deck and you have a lot of small things running around, uh, there's a good chance that you might, you know, have a token deal damage to something and it doesn't, you know, one of their things just eats your, your guy, but then you can play this, kill their thing, you know, multiple things are put in the graveyard. I think this will trigger, you know, relatively easy. Then it says solve. This case is a 4-4 four, four Gorgon creature with death touch and lifelink in addition to its other types. Seems pretty powerful for one mana. I mean, uh, if you just set this up in the right spot or if you have some self mill, I think you're going to be pretty happy with a one mana 4-4 four, four death touch lifelinker. I mean, yeah, there's a hoop you have to jump through, but... Once you do this, it seems pretty powerful. So I, I'm really interested in a case of the Gorgon's Kiss. I think I, I want to try this one out pretty quickly. All right, so here is our rare case in black. It is the case of the Stashed Skeleton. This is one in a black for a rare enchantment. It says, when the case enters the battlefield, create a 2-1 black skeleton creature token and suspect it. So it has menace and can't block. Then to solve, you control no suspected skeleton. So all it has to do is die somehow or whatever. Just get removed bounced, exiled, whatever. You control no suspected skeletons or just unsuspected, right? Um, then you get the solved ability, and then you can pay one in a black, sacrifice this case, search your library for a card, put it in your hand, and shuffle. Activate only as a sorcery. So, you, you know, I'm really looking at this in, like, the, the red-black suspect aggro deck, right, where you're just trying to push damage. So eventually they got to block this thing, then you control no suspected skeletons, um, and then you get to go tutor the best card in your in your library. It sounds great. So um, seems really powerful, relatively easy. I mean, the thing you wish you could do is just block, but you can't. So uh, I'm pretty excited about this. I think this is going to be a, a very good card. You're, you're going to lose to this card. All right, moving on to red. We've got the case of the burning masks. This is one red red for a uncommon enchantment. It says when this case enters the battlefield it deals three damage to target creature and opponent control so uh, looking to pick off a lot of creatures with this three damage seems pretty nice then to solve three or more sources you control dealt damage this turn so um, i think you can just play this then attack with two things those deal damage then you can solve it and once you solve it you can sacrifice this case exile the top three cards of your library choose one of them you may play that card this turn so a way to deal with something, attack, then you can potentially get some card advantage, some card selection. I think especially in red decks, this is going to be pretty nice. Uh, you're just going to want to, you know, take down their creature so you can attack. Then step two basically is attack, and then you get a bonus. So Case of the Burning Mask looks pretty good. Um, it's a removal spell, which is always nice and limited. And then you're just incentivized to kind of do what red wants to do anyway, which is just attack. So um, I'm excited for this. I think this is going to be pretty good. All right. Looking at case of the crimson pulse, we are at two in a red for a rare enchantment. It says when this case enters the battlefield, discard a card, then draw two cards. Okay. So that's a little expensive for uh, just your typical tormenting voice. Uh, then it says to solve, you have no cards in hand. So uh, looking to be this kind of aggressive red deck where you're dumping your hand on the battlefield. Then it says at the beginning of your end step, or sorry, at the beginning of your upkeep, discard your hand, then draw two cards. So uh, basically, once you get Hellbent and you can solve this, then you start drawing two cards a turn. So that seems really powerful. So if you're an aggressive slain red deck and you can just play a lot of cheap things and dump your hand and just really push damage, I think this is going to be really powerful. And I'm looking forward to playing Case of the Crimson Pulse. So this looks like a really good card in red, especially aggressive red decks. Uh, pick this one up. This one should be pretty fun. All right. Now in green, we've got the Case of the Locked Hothouse. This is three in a green for a rare enchantment. It says you may play an additional land on each of your turns. So I'm actually not that excited about this because once you're already paying four for it, you probably don't have a ton of lands just sitting in your hand. So I don't know... How good this is going to be in a limited game. This is to solve, you control seven or more lands. Okay, that seems reasonable. Then it says solve, you may look at the top card of your library at any time, and you may play lands and cast creature and enchantment spells from the top of your library. Now that seems great. So I think the first one of this is basically useless. Then 
solving it, I think, as long as you're kind of this green, grindy deck getting into the late game, you should solve it. But the last one, the last one's really where you want to be. I think this is a deck that if you are kind of this grindy, maybe kind of a green, black, you're just trying to outgrind your opponent, this will help you grind, and it's going to be nice. Um, but I don't don't look for your, you to, like, really ramp really hard off of this because that's just not going to happen. But, but the last ability, once you have this solved, you should be able to get into the late game and, and feel pretty good about it. All right, for our last case, we've got the case of the Trampled Garden. This is two and a green for an uncommon enchantment. It says when the case enters the battlefield, distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures you control. All right, so it's a fine little bonus. Then to solve, creatures you control have total power eight or greater. Okay, I'm really looking at this card to be more of like <clears throat> big monsters, big green things, maybe Gruul, Simic kind of deal where you just have big stuff. So this already helps you out. Like it helps you get to creatures you control have total power eight or greater. I'm really interested in the solved ability. It says whenever you attack, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature. It gains trample in, until end of turn. I think in this set, there's going to be a lot of little tokens running around that are going to try to chump block here and there. And giving your big thing trample can be big game. So I like case of the temple garden. I think that uh, while... It would be awesome if it had flash and you could distribute those counters at instant speed. That's not how it works. And uh, But I think you're going to be mostly pretty happy with this. I think especially in, in like a gruel shell, you are going to like this. I think this is kind of a big creature card. But but I do believe that trampling over little chump blockers um, could be a big thing. I think in the last set in uh, Ixalan, we saw that the dinos having trample really made gruel really competitive. And so... This card might be be a key to that. So look forward to the Case of the Temple Trampled Garden. Case of the Trampled Garden. All right, that's all the cases. So pretty excited to see how many of them I'm going to solve uh, in this limited format. But please make sure that you follow us here on Big Play MTG. Like, subscribe. Uh, my goal is just to help you improve your win rate and help you have fun playing limited magic. So follow us. Stay tuned. More stuff to come. Looking forward to more gameplay and strategy videos for Murders at Karloff Manor.